You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with BFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Pancakes and Bacon. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison, joined with Reed Bacon. We got a doozy today. Uh, a lot of stuff happening outside of the football field. So we got Transfer Portal Bonanza going on. Guys leaving, guys coming in. Um, and we just wanted to break down some of the guys who have actually already shown up on campus from this 2024 recruiting class. And we'll we'll touch on the rest of the guys next week uh, and leading into that Iowa game. Um, but I want to try and at least break down these guys. I know we did a little bit of it during the actual recruiting process when they committed, but now that they're actually here, now that they're actually signed, it's a little more exciting. Um, but first, before we get into any of that, Reed, how are we doing, bud? Ah, let's go. <laughs> Ah, what are you back. fired up for? We're back, baby. We're back. Like, we're getting our you just like seeing my up. face. What? I said, do you just like seeing my face? That way you're fired up. Yeah, I mean, you and I've we've we've talked, but honestly, we haven't talked as much. Which we've been, I've been busy with some work stuff, and you weren't feeling well. But trying to get ready for the break, trying to get ready for Christmas. It's it gets a little hectic. Yeah, so we haven't talked as much as I thought we would have in between little dead period of, of the pod. Um, but very excited for this one because I still remember watching a lot of the junior films. So a lot of these individuals committed spring yep. and summer, we yep. watched, we talked, and now it's like, holy crap, we're already here. Their senior year's over with. Now we can talk. And so not only is it breaking down film, but I feel like my memory serves pretty well of, where each of them improved, or maybe I wanted to see this or that. So that's one reason I'm excited. Uh, plus, yeah, I just want to – I'm excited to hear what you think about about some of the recruits. Yeah, so. I, I'm excited too. I want to I want to know what you think as well. Um, I think a couple guys, like, kind of bounced off the screen to me uh, watching their most updated films. And then another a couple, a couple other guys, I was like, okay, well, like, what are we looking at here? <laughs> right. So it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. So I, I know you just made fun of me because you said we got to keep the the open slash intro quick. And I said, well, I do have a story. And I said, I'll make it quick. And you said you never make a story ever quick. Uh, yeah, everybody comment. Yeah, leave a comment if you think Reed can make a story quick. All right, I'm going to do this quick. So, so Megan called me uh, a week or so ago. Uh -huh. And Lisa, as I call her, Mama Flo, since Megan's last name is Flora, I call her mom Lisa. I call her uh, Mama Flo or Mama Flora. Well, so they both call me and Lisa's telling me a story. And she's like, hey, I wanted to tell you this. And I was like, OK, like I have no idea where this is going. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, Mama Flora has a really good friend named Ginger. And Ginger has a daughter, and I wrote these down so that I wouldn't forget. And now I just realized I turned my pages because I have multiple pages of notes for the recruits. So Ginger's daughter is named Lindsay, and she has a fiance named Cameron. I actually think I'm. I think we're going to this wedding when it comes around. I, I think that's one of the ones Megan said that we were going to, but I can't remember for sure. But anyways, so Lindsay gets in the car to go hang out with Cameron one night, and he's listening to a podcast, and she's like she like hears it. And I don't know if it's something that was said or whatever. She's like, wait, what podcast is this? And he's like, Oh, this is one of my favorite UT podcasts. I listen to it's pancakes and bacon. And so I think they Love put it. two and two together and was like, Holy crap. Like, I think that's Megan's boyfriend. And then they, they found out that it was, well, well, Cameron is a police officer in Maryville. And I was like, major respect. I was like, that is so awesome to hear that he's listening. Yeah. Um, so, A, we, those, those stories and anytime someone comes up to us are the coolest things about doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that he's a police officer, I was like, man, major shout out to him because that's an impressive, impressive job this time and day. And they do not get enough credit. Yeah. Um, 
they do not get enough credit and I am forever indebted and grateful for what they do. And I know it, it hits close to home for you because of John. Shout out, shout out John Curbson, little bro. Yes. He is uh, just graduated from police Academy about a month ago. So congratulations to John. He's uh, he's not quite so little anymore. Uh, he is technically six years younger than me, but he is bigger than I am <laughs> taller and larger at this point. So John is not, uh, John is not the cop that you want to mess with. Cause he is, even though he's very friendly, he's, he's, he's a very, I was about to say, listen, if, if there's one cop a, as a criminal that you're going to run into, it's probably John. He, he, he would give you a little bit of grace to start with, but as soon as you cross a line, John is not the guy that you want. <laughs> like, yeah, because has that has that flip, and if he's pissed, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> he's yeah. just that's who he is. Yeah, he's he's large. I mean, he's a legit six four, six five. And he's he's six five and probably two ninety. Yeah, right now. Yeah, so. he's got the yeah he's got them Kirby jeans and like I said, as nice as can be. So he'll he will absolutely be super. He will be what some people want to call cool cop, uh, as long as you just abide by it. But anyways, that was a really cool story, and I had not told you that story yet. I, I was saving it on here, so it was really neat. And at oh. first, I was like, Mom, Flo, are you just messing with me? She's like, Oh, I'm dead serious. I was like, All right, I got to say something. So shout out to Cameron. Thank you for your service and thank you for listening. I um, love it. I love it. Uh, I'm ready to go to transfer portal. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. You're going to have to, you're going to have to help me out with like keeping up with this on the yeah, side. <laughs> I'll just get, I'll just start talking about the next recruit, but transfer portal. Um, what I want to start with is I just want to tell everybody out there, relax. It's okay. Like I know this is shocking. I know these things are out of left field because this is the new college football landscape. We're not used to this. We're not used to transfer portals every offseason before bowl games. That That's not a normal thing, right? Now it is. Now it's normal. Now guys are going to literally transfer schools for one singular reason. It doesn't, it's not, oh, I don't like the coach and I'm not playing and I don't get paid. No, it can literally be, hey, I just want more money hey, the coach yelled at me one time. Like, that's how sensitive some guys can be and want to transfer that way. It sucks when you think you have a legacy kind of guy uh, in a Tyler Barron. Uh, you know, being from Knoxville, I went to Knoxville Catholic. I, You know, I was wanting him to finish his career out here. I don't think... Being at Ole Miss versus being at Tennessee helps anything in regards to draft stock. I don't think it helps anything in terms of more education on how to play defensive line. Um, I don't really think it ramps up the possible winning percentage for the next year. So if all of those things aren't really going up, then – Guess what did? Those pockets, baby. <laughs> so they are willing to pay that person more. I want everyone to think about every single transfer portal guy as like Tyreek Hill. Okay. Kansas City Chiefs would have loved to have Tyreek Hill. They're having wide receiver problems right now. He would have been a great addition, but Buddy wanted 70 plus million dollars and they could not pay that to him. They did not think he was worth that. I need to jump in here. I need to jump in because I don't want people to think that just because a recruit goes elsewhere, that that team or that school or that organization outbid. That is not always the case because just because you, if you go to an auction and you have the most money, you can win a hundred out of a hundred times. That's facts. If you show up and you are the richest person there, and you you want to at a certain level you could win you could you could buy everything at the auction technically yeah and so just because and like I tweeted out 
just because he went to Ole Miss did not mean that we went and there was a put it on your table competition and Ole Miss beat us. I I don't believe that in any world that if Coach Heifel, if Danny White, if whoever said we need this guy here, you're telling me that they're not going to find a donor at the University of Tennessee that pones it up? No. And, and no. No, no one could ever convince me otherwise. I just don't want it to be like we lost out on him because we didn't – we couldn't pay what the other schools paying him. You have to remember, there's a major key in this. It's do they want to pay that price for that person? Exactly. That's what I was trying to get with, with the Tyreek. It's not we. Well, could. you said you said the Chiefs couldn't afford him. So it was yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it's not. It's not necessarily that we could not afford him. It is that whatever price evaluation was given to him by Ole Miss whatever they said to him, we did not think that was worth it. And that's okay. Like teams move on. Teams have success. Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year. Tiger Kiel's having a great season this year. Both, both can have success without each other. Um, it's just, hey, I want to spend this money on a freshman who just had like a James Pierce. Um I want to spend this money on other recruits I'm getting in, five stars. I want to spend this money on Nico. I want to spend this money in other places on getting this tight end to come here. Like that that's what it goes down to. Yet, like every school can have a big pot. I think Tennessee's is bigger than Ole Miss's, which you agree. But hey, I want to put 20% here, 15 here, 10 here. I, you know, that is part of head coaching nowadays. It's just it's just like the NFL and the salary cap. Where are you going to put your salary cap? Exactly. So, and, and like I said, if it came to it and Tennessee had technically maxed out their allotment, but they really felt strong about needing one more, need some else, they're going to go get the money. In my heart, I think they could do that. Um, now, you got to remember, there's some, there's some of these boosters that will change – from, you know, if they've gotten burned once or they've been hit up with a ton of money and they're like, hey, we just went seven. And I'm not talking about specifically yeah. Tennessee. I'm talking about in general. You can't go to the same well over and over and over if you're not. For example, if Ole Miss comes out and Tyler Barron doesn't have a good year or whatever the case may be, someone else is going to come around and Lane's like, I need money. And they're like, well, what happened with Tyler Barron or what happened with this guy or whatever the case may be. So you, yeah. have, to, you have to be pretty careful with that. But, yeah, it's just very much of where do you want to spend your money? You know, and who do you think is valuable? They could have been like, you know, Ty, they could have been like, hypothetically, you, you're Tyler Barron. You walk into my office. I'm Coach Heifel. We're having our exit meetings. Like, Tyler, we want you here. We love you. We appreciate you. We think you're really, really good. I'm assuming that you're going to want to try to make, you know, some NIL. What? Are, where's your head at? What are you thinking? And then it could be a very quick, Hey, I can give you this, but I can't get to that. And I'm sorry, but you're going to have to go find that elsewhere. And then it's up to Tyler to sit there and go, well, do I take my chances and enter the portal? What if I don't get what I want? Can I still maybe come back? It's a very weird dynamic and fine line, but I just think there's a lot that's going on behind scenes and a lot that's not talked about that, that no one, no one on the outside really knows mm -hmm. unless a player or their family is telling people, um, yeah. Here's a weird thing, too, that I, I've really just kind of thought about now is for a lot of guys that don't make it in the NFL, say, um, don't spend five plus years there uh, under three, which is majority of people who try into the NFL, where you went to school ends up being a safe place for you. Yeah. Where, hey, I didn't make it in the NFL, but you know what? If I go back to Knoxville, I can probably get a job somewhere. Uh, someone will give me a job for something. I can make money. Um, hey, I didn't make the NFL. You know what? I can go back to Ole Miss. I can make some money. I, I can get a job there. People will support me. I don't know if that's going to be the same with one-off guys, with one-year guys with hey you spent two years here but you didn't stay like I, I i mean what if tyler doesn't have like the most productive season has a decent season but isn't necessarily talked about that much at Ole miss 
and then goes in NFL, you know, maybe fizzles out, maybe doesn't make it. Where does he go? Yeah. It's right? not either. He's not back here. It's not, no, it's not, it's not Knoxville. No. And, and if he didn't play well enough, then people in Ole Miss are going to be like, oh, yeah, there's that Tyler Barron guy that was a bus for him for us. For yeah. One I remember, I remember putting in 500, 500 grand to their uh, collective and didn't turn out anything. Right. Right. So it's like those kinds of things. It's like, listen, people, I understand. I know you want to get your money. I would have done, I would have wanted my, my money too. Okay. But understand you're burning bridges when you do things like this. Hey, I got to say something. That's just life. It's been funny because I've been here and like, so I called you three weeks ago and they were talking about how a serviceable, serviceable tackle could get six figures. Right, left or right, and then I heard that now serviceable tackles, left or right, were getting like four and five hundred thousand. They said it on a college game day. Pete Thamel did, and I called Kyler immediately, and Kyler's like, "Bro, are you trying to piss me off?" And the funny thing is, is I then came to you, and I even told this to Tyler when I was telling him that I was joking with you about this. I said, "I said Kyler's too nice. He's the Tennessee boy." Kyler would be like, "Uh, can I get some nil?" And they'd be like, "No," and you'd be like, "Okay, it's fine. Like I still love Tennessee. You wouldn't have been the savage." hometown because you you were more for people who are watching that are maybe new or didn't know like Kyler was obviously more than a serviceable tackle he was a darn good tackle and so it's like you could have gotten some serious coin whether from Tennessee or if you said hey I'm gonna go somewhere that needs a tackle it would have been nice not gonna lie (laughs) uh would have helped out a lot yeah would have helped out a lot (laughs) Yeah, but uh, anyways, to hit on some other transfer portal stuff, I'll say some just real quick stuff. You know, like a Warren Burrell going to Georgia Tech makes sense. You know, makes sense. Tamari McDonald going back to that part of the uh, part of the country makes sense. Now, do I have any idea if he said, hey, UT, I want some NIL? And they said, well, we'd love to have you. We can give you this, but we can't give you more, much more than that because of it's very much that NFL, hey, we need left tackles, we need right tackles, I need corners, I need edge rushers, I need a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Everywhere else, I can probably much plug and play. I mean, do we really think that we can't replace – not that I don't like – I like Tamari McDonald a lot. I thought he was a pretty darn good player, but he, he's replaceable. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he wasn't anything – like, I feel like if Kamal hadn't would have had a chance to come back, I think Kamal could have gotten some dime because they're like, hey, corner – we can trust him on an island, like we got to. Sure. But 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 a safety or a nickel, nah, not not so much. So, you know, Tamarian going back down there, I th- I, I understand that. I think that's fine. Jack Luttrell yeah. going out to Arizona, I get I that. Think also, I think also people need to start wrapping their heads around the value per position. Yeah, this, this has never been a, a a talking point in college football. It's always NFL. But now I want you guys to look at every football position, just like NFL. Who's the most expensive? That quarterback, that left tackle, that defensive end. That's the most expensive, okay? I'm not paying big bucks to a linebacker. I'm not paying big bucks to a safety. That's just not happening. The, well, the only time you get – and you forgot corners. Corners are a premium position. But the only yeah. time you're going to see big money to a, you know, like a linebacker or a safety or maybe like an interior D lineman – I mean, those are probably the three lowest paid positions in the NFL. What's that? Interior D line, linebacker. No, 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 no. Interior D line, those guys make absolute guap. No, I was going to say the guys that are the lowest tiered are running backs, linebackers, and safeties. But, but you can still break the bank if you are elite at what you do. If Tamari McDonald was about to be a first round draft pick or second round draft pick in a year or so, they, they probably would have done what they needed to do to keep him if he was that much of a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I agree. Jack Luttrell, I get him going out to Arizona. Makes sense. Um, not that I don't think he could have played here, but I, I don't know. He was here a year from what I saw at the one practice. I wasn't impressed. But once again, I've said this. He was a freshman. Like, he could have had plenty of time to grow. But if Arizona is um, – it's a lower it's a lower level of football, so maybe that fits him more. I'm trying to think who else has entered – um that have left uh like mo clipper i think left and went somewhere smaller so that makes sense i get it yeah i mean i'm deshaun to, rucker i don't even know one. i don't know if he's even gone anywhere yet no and then addison nichols ends up at arkansas um he did yeah oh i didn't even know that yet so oh 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 oh. Danico slaughter going to arkansas 
like that one is I don't fully understand because he's not necessarily from out in that way. He's a Georgia guy. I thought Danico was good. He may have been one of those that said, hey, we, you know, I I really, really liked how Danico played. I liked his play style. That doesn't mean that I thought that he was amazing. I thought he had some really good moments, Mm -hmm. and I thought he was a pretty good player. Once again, I think he's replaceable, though. And and so I think if he wanted money and they were like, sorry, we're just not going to be able to give it to you here because we are putting it elsewhere, then – go to Arkansas, maybe get a little something. But then again, it's like, hey, you're going to Arkansas and you're probably going to win three or four games next year. Yeah, it, I mean, it, Sam it Pittman is, could be fired. Easily. They, he could be fired in the middle of the season. It could be kind of a disaster season. And then I did not know that Addison Nichols went there. So be what's, interesting to see. Uh, how that what's his name? Their starting quarterback is in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, K.J. Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I When did Addison announce? I didn't even know that. I, I don't know. I just looked up Tennessee football – uh, transfer class and was just okay. going scrolling and saw that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, anyone else that we haven't mentioned? No, I mean, not really. Brandon Turnage, he hasn't found a place yet. Yeah. Uh, and Connor Meadows, who I think was a walk on <laughs> offensive lineman, he hasn't found okay. anywhere. That's the other thing is, too, you got to be careful when you jump in because you might not find a place. Very scary. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's jump into the guys that are on campus. Let's do it. Let's jump into these young these young bucks who just got here. Um, and we'll start with the big name with little Mike Matthews, wide receiver. Uh, now, I will have to start with when we first watched Mike's highlights, uh, I said I was underwhelmed by it. Um, <laughs> that it did not... It did not jump from the page. Uh, that I think it has a lot to do with the way Mike plays. He is very like, I don't know, just kind of go with the flow. Like it even like while he's running his routes, while he's running past people, it's just kind of like he's just da, 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 just striding. Past people. So he's very, very fast, very fast individual. So can just escape dudes out on the field. Um, and I think he is a very good hands catcher. I don't think I really saw many body catches from him. It was mostly hands. So I'm excited to see what Hypel can do with Mike Matthews. Let that be the clip that goes out. <laughs> that I am excited. Okay. Nobody get upset. Are you done? I guess. Okay. Wow. That was uh, pretty underwhelming. Um, <laughs> if you, if you, if you said you were underwhelmed with this film, that was pretty underwhelming breakdown. Also. Well, that's uh, right. Listen, I'll just leave. Uh, I was know. underwhelmed the first time yeah. we watched his film. This time I wasn't necessarily overwhelmed by it and i don't want to be a negative nancy let me just uh let me preface this again for people that might be new i don't know how many new people will get or if they hear a clip and they want to jump and see this you know kyler was a pretty big time recruit had multiple 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 offers went to ut played was darn good played some in the nfl in the canadian league he might be a little bit more difficult to impress. And not not from an ego thing, but just from a vol for life. He's just going to call it how he sees it. And so you're not being negative. Um, I don't know if that's fair to say you might be a little bit harder to be impressed. I should. I don't know if I should say that. I think because we're both about the same, like, impressed, not impressed, or whatever. But I just don't want someone to, that's listening for the first time to be like, who's this loser in his basement? Like, <laughs> you know, so – Hey, listen, I might not be the most qualified, but I'm more qualified than most. <laughs> Ding. That's a nice little one-liner. I appreciate it. Hey, you you at least, listen, if you don't break down film for a living, you were at least in the, in the program for five years and saw a lot of people come in, a lot of people not. But anyway, so – here's the thing here's the thing for Mike Matthews for me I I was this is a this is a if, if I had a a green arrow going up and a, and a red arrow that would go down like a stock market price yeah his, his went up for for me so I I got Mike as a ball player I 
my favorite play is him at safety. I mean, he recognized it, he took off, and he drilled Buddy, and then he gets fired up about it. So I'm like, he's a receiver, and he's going to be – he, right, he's he's a receiver, and he's going to be a darn good receiver, but I like to see that. And the other thing is, too, for me, if you're a five-star, I love to see your asses playing both ways in high school because you're you're going to be the best player on the team most likely or one, or one of the best players, so go go dog out. And I love that. He had a pancake block on, on one of his highlights that, that I knew that you would like, and I liked it. The 238 mark uh, that he makes a catch over Buddy's head in the middle of the field and plucked it, very impressed by that. I mean, he went over Buddy, came back. So that was um, that that was great to see. I loved his hurdle. And another thing, like you're talking about, for me, he doesn't look overly fast, but he leaves everyone in the dust. So he is very much a smooth athlete, a glider, because he might not look, but he's leaving people. And so he's got, yeah. obviously, really, really good speed. As you said, he's got great hands. He high points well. He works. I thought it was a good thing to point out that he works at both the inside and the outside receiver. And I think that's I think that's a really nice thing to have for for somebody going into Heupel's offense. Um, like, I, and then I have here that he attacks the middle of the field really, really well. So I like Mike a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think with how effort, how effortlessly he looked and played and what he did, I, I do get why he's a five-star because I do turn it on and like, you know, this is pretty jokey and he's doing it both ways, offense and defense. So, so I'm fine with it. I mean, the one of the first thing I wrote down was like, it's too easy for him. Yeah. Like it just That's seems he's like he's not trying because everyone's so slow around him. Or he's just that much better of an athlete. I don't know if I would say everyone's slow around him. I, I, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that might just be it that he is that much faster or he is that much better. And he's actually not, he actually is trying. He just looks like he, like he, like the way he runs, the way he moves, it's very effortless. Like he's just like, what, like whatever is going on. It almost, it almost looks like he's like lulling you to sleep as he runs by you. Yeah. He's, I, I, I He's. I was a lot more excited watching this one, and like I said, I like the fact that he was playing offense and defense because he's not playing defense at Tennessee, but it shows something about him and his character and as a player. Dudes, dudes wanting to be out there, ball out and win. So I'm, I'm really excited about him. Um, yeah. And I, the last thing is, is you and I want to turn a film on and watch a five star and just be like our eyes blown away, and be like holy crap. But then again, sometimes when it just looks really, really easy to where it's almost like this is kind of boring, that's another sign of he's just really, really good. Yeah. I mean, so, he's just so much better in all this competition. Yeah. All right. Next, Boo Carter. Boo. Um, listen, Boo, I'm going to need some defensive highlights, big dog. You're going to be playing defense at Tennessee. Where are the reps? <laughs> you hey 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 he ain't putting a highlight tape together for you he's already on campus he, he, he <laughs> I, understand. Had that I understand I understand but all I gotta see all, all I get to see is him juking mugs out him catching passes him doing little sweeps uh little running back power counter uh it's like buddy if if you really want to play offense like go play offense I what do you want? Like, don't be mad. Don't be mad when you get to Tennessee and they're like, you're going to play safety. This is where you're going to play and you're going to enjoy it. Don't be like, oh, I'm transferring. I'm getting out of here. It's like, they told you day one, you're playing defense. We're not putting you on offense. I just, I can see it going down the that path, right? Like I've seen enough guys in my time of like, oh, I think I'm this when there's something else. And it like those guys just don't work out because they don't take what the coaches are saying seriously. They're like, well, I know, I know who I am. I know I'm a better athlete than every other wide receiver you have in your room or running back. Like, I'm sure he thinks that. So that's it's like I really like Boo. He's a freak athlete. I can tell he is. But I have no idea how good he is with his hips. I have no idea, like, is he a really, really good tackler? I don't know if he has good eyes and coverage. Like, I just don't know those things right now because 
it's not important to him to put any of that stuff out. It's way more important to score for him. Well, I mean, he didn't put a senior one, a senior year out. He did not put a senior year film out. So it's not like he said, let me just put all my offense together and not any defense. I think he's just in that he's a high level recruit. He's being recruited. He can go wherever he wants. Like he doesn't need to put another film out. So I get it. He just, For he sure. didn't want to. but I, I mean, I have no notes. I saw one play and it was when I was watching uh, Marcus Gore's highlights. And so he was back at, Boo was back at safety, read it well, shot it. He was playing fast. He was playing, you know, athletic as heck and came up and made a nice tackle and got fired up. And I was like, okay, well, like that's the only, that's the only highlight I'm getting to see. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with Boo, but, um hopefully it works out well for everyone involved and i mean yeah, yeah I, that that's where it's just like scary to me it's like i have no idea what's going to happen with him yeah who knows uh, yeah the coaches obviously have spent a lot of time with him and if they're willing to bring him on then whatever so yeah i don't know but i have nothing else to say because I, I i can't watch anything else yeah you know how i feel about the athletes yeah i know pick something uh, all right, Marcus Gore, Jr. This is one of the better tacklers I have seen out of a DB in quite a while. This guy, square hips to the, to the line of scrimmage, eyes through traffic. He's able to sift through blocks. And, I mean, most of his highlight tape is him setting an edge, him uh, – you know, fighting through a puller, like him making open field tackles, I, you know, didn't get to see a lot of coverage snaps out of him, but like, my goodness, like put this guy at nickel, keep him in the box. I like it. And he's long. He's a long kind of lanky dude too. Comes off the edge in high school. Um, I guess they just kind of like, listen, you, you're athletic. You can make tackles. We're just going to send corner blitz or whatever they called it safety blitz yeah safety blitz like uh, but hell of a hell of a box safety yeah so for for marcus i remember really liking his film uh when he first came out so he's fluid he's smooth he's athletic he's a downhill player he's instinctive um i had to go all the way to the five five minute 30 second mark of one of his highlights where he was probably my favorite play a theme for me that you're going to hear me mention a lot during these next uh, breakdowns, I want to see – I want to be able to watch a play and envision that happening on Saturdays and envision that, you know, it's a it's a play that happens all the time and maybe I wasn't super pumped about how it always ended with Tennessee. So, for example, the 530 mark, it's a swing route and it's him in one-on-one with a blocker, and he goes up, he engages, he disengages, he wraps up, makes open field tackle for probably about a one-yard loss. Do you know how many times uh, over the past couple of years that and, – and I thought, uh, here we go. I, they want to say that Reed's the defensive back apologist. There was multiple times, whether it was Wesley, whether it was Tamarian, whether it was Danico, whether it was Kamal, whether it was Gabe – and not to say they were perfect at it, but I thought there was a lot of times over the past couple of years where I thought they would come up, disengage well, make an open field tackle. Now, there was plenty of times where we would have liked to see it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I see something like that, I'm like, yeah, that's the sh- I want to see. He flies up. He recognizes. He disengages in the block like, like it's no problem. Then he makes a nice open field tackle. I want to see the wrap up. I know a lot of times in high school – these guys are bigger, stronger, and faster. They can run around and throw shoulders and people, but it's about building good habits. And when I'm watching stuff now, as I've gotten older, I care more about the technique and the more about the fundamentals of how you did something than the For actual sure. result, than the actual result of how you did it. Oh, exactly. Because did you get your head across on that tackle, or no? Did you keep your eyes downfield? Did you did you use your length properly? You know what I mean? Like yeah. all the little things across all different positions. So um, I like his first play working through traffic. A super nice knife through wrap-up tackle. Uh, the slot man coverage I thought was really fluid, and it was natural, and he tracked the ball well. He went up and high-pointed it. There are two things I didn't like, and the reason I'm going to jump to those two things now before I finish was because – 
in that play, he gives his back to the quarterback and to the receiver. And you just, I know you're athletic and I know that you can get away with it in high school. If that quarterback a little bit better, been a little bit better, he actually could have thrown it more on a line and thrown it quicker and they're probably going to score or you make a tackle after a 40 yard gain. But if you do that and you're, I'm back here at safety, I'm pop, pop, pop. He gives me there, I open there, and then he gives me this one, and I rotate. What the hell happens when he sticks his foot in again and goes that way? And it's a Alabama or LSU yeah, yeah. Or, or Texas State. It's one of these Alabama, LSU, or Texas receivers, and he comes Oklahoma. and goes, yeah, any of them, bro. And they they're gonna you're gonna be on Sports Center looking like a spin top because he just literally hit you with the outside, inside, outside, and you mm-hmm. and you gave him your back, and you just can't do that. So. That was something I did. And then there was a couple times where he – well, not a couple. There was one time where he very much was playing to where if this is the line of scrimmage, if you're watching on YouTube and this is the line of scrimmage, I'm saying square here. He was given a lot of these where he was coming into the line of scrimmage, turned. And there yeah. was one time he turned and gave his back to a blocker. My friend Marcus, if you do that in the SEC, you are going to get murdered. And when I mean murder, not necessarily your head taken off, you're going to get driven – 25 yards in the opposite direction. You're not going to make the play. You cannot give your back to anyone. No. It's just, I mean, it's just like it, – it's not smart for anyone. I mean, maybe if Eric Berry came down in the when his time and came down and was quick enough to give someone his back and rotate real quick, but that's Eric Berry. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a special talent. Like, you got to get away from stuff like that. But anyways, those are the only two negatives. 59 seconds in. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, appreciate playing well before this. Oh, yeah. So 59 seconds. This is one thing that you and I have talked about before, whether it's outside linebackers, defense ends, whoever's coming off the edge and blitzing, and they just come off the edge and they just 100 miles an hour make the tackle. Like, that's sweet, whatever, that's great. I want to see if you're playing your position and playing your role in that play. Mm -hmm. He comes up, and instead of just balls to the wall, he will stop for a one or two half second to make sure it's not a boot or a play action or whatever, to make sure he's sealing his edge, and then he goes and makes a tackle. So those are the little things that I do like to see. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, uh, with the one twelve mark, very nice to stretch the play out and nice open field tackle. So Marcus, I really like this highlight film the first time. This one's fine. Um, so maybe not necessarily a red arrow going down, but just highlights. I'm like, okay, yeah, it was it was fine. Maybe but, just a yeah, yellow line. Yeah, it was just a nice little yellow line. I still like him as a player, but there's because I do. I think he's a good enough athlete to play. And, and be be pretty solid for for Tennessee, but there's still things to me that I see and it's like, is this stuff is it going to translate at the next level at on a, on a high clip or was he just really really good in high school and you know because there there is a there is a transition phase. Yeah, I mean that's really true. And like, is he going to be doing the exact same stuff that he had to do in high school? Right, like. Is he going to be in the same positions that he wasn't like that guy's ne- like he's probably not going to be on the line and running down it a lot like that technique you talked about. It's like he's probably not going to be in that situation a lot as a well. Safety. The thing that you got to think about is if he's playing safety or if he is playing nickel that star position for Tennessee. We love to bring that blitz. We love to bring that guy on that blitz. If Tim Banks is still our D coordinator in a year or two, and if he's, mm-hmm. you know, older. So there are elements. It's it's not apples to apples, but it's definitely apples to oranges. Hey, you're still coming off an edge. Yeah. You know, you know stuff like that. So there's still a little bit potential there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a little bit of potential that he could be doing some of the same stuff. Some of the similar stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, QB commit. Old Jake Merklinger, going to murk your ass. Uh, I like Jake. I like Jake. I do too. He is athletic enough, right, to do what he needs to do. You see him pulling the ball, taking some quarterback counters by himself. Um, I love the offense he runs. I think it bodes real well with our offense. It, it, it's, you see the route combinations they have out on the edge. They run a dig and a wheel, right? And it's like, okay, Jake's used to looking at that. You see the play actions that they do with someone coming over the middle. Okay, we've seen that in Heifel's offense. Um, so it's just like I see him running kind of a similar offense. He's athletic enough to get out of trouble if he wants to. When he does escape the pocket, it's not about running. He does not give a crap about running. There was a play 
probably two, three minutes in where he rolls out, there is nobody in front of him. But he's not trying to he's not trying to run. He's not trying to run at all. It, even though he can, he's like, where's the guy downfield? Where can I throw this ball? Um, so I love that out of a quarterback. And man, is he good on play action passes, keeping his eyes where they need to be. Quarterbacks get into this, this realm of, oh, I'm looking at where I'm handing the ball, right, to the running back, or I, I, I'm staying on that in man on the line of scrimmage too long. Jake, it, there's just multiple plays where he has that ball in the running back's gut, and he's just looking, he's just staring at a wide receiver run a slant, just staring at him and just ready to pull and rip. Um, and he does a very good job at reading that. Whenever he gets an open man, he lets it go. Uh, and then, honestly, it was like the first half of his highlights. I'm watching him on these play actions. I'm like, yeah, I like this. I'm watching him hit like a quick dig, quick slant. Um, I'm watching him run the ball. And then, all of a sudden, he starts to put in these long balls into his film. And I'm like, oh, snap, buddy. Because in the beginning of the film, I was literally like, man, he doesn't have that much strength, right? He doesn't necessarily zip a ball like you've seen out of certain quarterbacks. But boy, does he have touch. Boy, does he have touch. And I was like, if you're going to – if you're going to do the opposite side of Joe Milton, where Joe has a, a ball that goes a thousand miles an hour, but there's no touch on it, Jake's the other way. It, his ball might not be that fast, but he's got touch, man. He's dropping it right in the basket over shoulders down the sideline. I There's not much that I can say where I'm like, I don't see – a way where Jake doesn't have six. Like, I think he could be very successful in this offense with what I'm seeing out of him and where I can see him like grow into understanding it more um, in Hypo's offense. It is very much like a, Hey, you got three things to worry about on this play. You worry about those three things. You don't do anything else. And I think that's what Jake's doing in high school too, where it's like you worry about handing that off to the running back, running it yourself or throwing it to this one guy. And that's it. I, I, I agree with you, Kyler, on a lot of things you said. I like Jake a lot. I really, really enjoyed his high school – I mean, his highlight film the first time we watched it. I thought the guy was just a darn darn good quarterback, darn good ball player. I watched it again, and I like him a lot, a lot, a lot. So, he hits his back foot, and he lets it rip. So, there's not a lot of wasted motion with him. I love the way that he works the pocket, sidesteps, eyes downfield, drops a bomb. Funny thing is, you already mentioned it. It was the wheel route combo. He knows he's got the wheel. I can picture Jake doing this, being on campus for a year or two. Nico kills it. We win two national championships back to back. <laughs> Anyways, so Nico's Heisman Trophy, there. all that good stuff. What's that? That's a Heisman Trophy, all that good stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, anyways, but no, I can picture it, man. Jake's Jake's there. He's learning. You know, Nico's the guy. Nico's doing his thing, and then we just if Jake stays. And he puts that work in, and in a year or two, it's like, well, don't forget about this Jake guy that we signed yeah. back in, you know, 2023, 2024. I, and I vision it. He's on the field. We call that same wheel route. He works up in the pocket and just dimes it. And I'm like, yeah, like is that is that Iceman out there? What, yeah. What's going on? Right. It's like, and so when I saw that play, ball up, step up, then gets out, eyes downfield, knows where his wheel route is. And, and hits a good shot. I, so, once again, I can see that translation translating perfectly to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, the 22nd mark against Savannah Christian because he had his broken down in middle bit. The way he worked his pocket, eyes downfield, worked progression, and found a wide receiver. So, it's another one where he worked the pocket well, but you can see him go check, 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 didn't get his options. He gets out, then he throws it and gets like a nine yard, a nine yard. It's just like those little things. I was like, you show me. Yeah. Five of those plays compared to these high school films, it's like drop back, bomb, drop back, bomb. It's like, no, I don't care about that. There's there's, there's thousands, thousands of high school quarterbacks that can drop back and throw a nice pretty bomb to some good athlete running down the sideline. I want to see this stuff, the intangibles. And so I love yeah. that. It's kind of like that that play that Nico had in the 
origin white game where he threw it to Ethan Davis on the sideline where he's just like, uh, escape, run, run. Here you go. Like yes. that's the kind of play where it's like, Oh, I like right. that. Right. Right. You said mobile enough. I had written down mobile enough and he's getting out. He's running mobile. Well, I thought he ran the, the RPO perfectly. We have some RPO stuff. He looked like he ran it better than Joe Milton's ever thought about running it in his life. No For shame sure. to Joe. I'm just saying Joe was our quarterback this year. He gets it in the belly. They take the running back. He pulls it. He starts running. That safety immediately shoots the alley. Boom, he dumps it right out to the slot. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, perfect. Then he gets down the red zone. He looks like he's about to break the pocket again. He puts his head down and he goes and tries to – I couldn't tell if he scored or not, but he gets his head down and he runs hard. It's like, you know what? That's smart quarterback play. You want to – there's that fine line of where you want to be smart, you want to slide, you don't want to take contact, you do want to use your legs to to extend a throw. Mm -hmm. But, damn it, sometimes there's times where you just got to be a ball player and you're on the six yard, and you're on the six yard line against in, in Neyland Stadium against Alabama, and you're rolling out, and you're like, Fuck it, "Man, they're all everyone's covered. Like, I gotta roll down my, I gotta put my head down and just go get bodies and get in this end zone." And so it's like little stuff like that. I was like, "That's that's a part of his game that that he has shown me, and that I trust him." So um, the other thing is, I gotta give a shout out. His receivers are pretty nasty. He's got a couple. There was that one guy who looked like a big old boy and goes up in high points, but I liked. And he has good accuracy, but – and maybe these are the same thing. Um, sometimes when I think of accuracy, I think of – yeah, for me in my, my brain, like accurate is like a slant coming in and you got the linebacker uh, mm-hmm. here and the safety here and the corner on his hip and you got to put it right through a window and it's a real tight window and like, oh, damn, that was so accurate. So he's accurate, but I also like his ball placement, which I guess could be accuracy too, but it's – He's got a guy, and he's throwing a back shoulder in high school. If, yeah. if his guys, if his guys running this way, and you're watching on YouTube, he's running his his receivers run this way. DB's here, and this receiver rotates around. Like, no, once again, no shade. He might have done it once or twice. I don't remember Joe Melding really going like multiple times. Like, oh, that was a nice back shoulder. He's keeping it away. It it maybe happened in that Bama game. And it, I, okay. well, I think he did it. I think he, <laughs> that was just an underthrow. <laughs> that wasn't no, no, necessarily I one, back shoulder. I think he did one to Jacob Warren against South Carolina that was kind of like a high point. But anyways, but anyways, I like Jake a lot. Yeah. I like him to the point to where I hope he comes here. He red shirts. He hopefully Nico crushes it for the next few years, and then it's Jake's show, um, and he doesn't bounce because I think he could be really, really good. I do too. So, um, all right. So we are on to Braylon Staley. Kyler, I know I was just talking. I got to talk. I got to talk Braylon. Yeah. Um, you go right ahead. Braylon is uh, – I'll just start. I, I, I love Braylon. I love Braylon. I love, Bra- I love Braylon too. Braylon, it, I mean, it might be hard pressed to find someone's film in this. And this is only half. These are the guys that are either here already or going to be early enrollees compared to the other guys that will potentially be signing, I guess, tomorrow. Um, and we're not breaking down the transfers just yet. It's going to be hard pressed for me to find someone that I like more than Jake or I like more than Braylon. Mm-hmm. So everything that I'm watching Braylon, like what's hitting in my head, he's a stud. He's a baller. He's nasty. He's athletic. He's smooth. He's twitchy. He's natural. This is one of those guys that I really liked his film the first time. And if you remember, I thought he was kind of a D hop type player. Hey, he's not overly fast. He's not overly twitchy. I literally put my second note, body contortion on 50, 50 balls. (laughs) Like who does that describe more than D hop? Exactly. And I saw that in his junior film. That's why I said when we when we watch him, I said he kind of reminds me he's a great catcher of the ball. And I said he kind of reminds me of D Hop. I go this, I go to this year's film and I'm like, I mean, this this red arrow could not or green arrow could not be pointing up more because it's almost like the normal maturation of a high school guy. It's like you go and you, you you're a freshman and, and and you might be okay and the coaches see there's some potential. I'm not talking about Braylon. I'm just talking about in general. Yeah, coaches see, hey, this guy's going to help us in a couple of years, pretty good. And then a, at, at these levels, at your level, it's like sophomore year, they're starting mm-hmm. to play some. Junior year, they're one of the better players. And then senior year, it's like, look out, this guy's 
an absolute problem. And that's what I felt like. I felt like he was really, really good last year. And now this year, he's just the best player on the field. And he's unstoppable. And so I like to see that because yeah. I have on here, he went from D hop, in my opinion, to now he looks like he does it all where he's like a Jamar chase. He's an AJ Brown where you can hit him and he'll house call it. He can, he can go in the middle of the field and, and hands catch and protect himself and take a big shot, but he still come down with a big first down. You mm-hmm. can throw him a 50-50 ball and he'll high point it. You can throw him a go route and he'll lay out and catch it or run by someone. Like, he could do it all. He might be – Braylon might be the, the, the my favorite highlight. I'm not going to say the best, but he might be my favorite highlight tape that I've watched in all of these that we've done because I go back and think, and I love Squirrel. He He's probably right there with Squirrel's highlight tape for me because I felt like the two of them – legitimately do everything as a wide receiver everything yeah and so so like a nathan leacock he's like oh he's a big body and like he can you know he can leave some people in the dust but like he's kind of got his mold and you got a caleb webb big body can high point it pretty good athlete then you got a chaz nimrod which i like because i felt like he was a very pros pro as a high school guy running all the different routes but i watch braylon i'm like dude this is nasty so anyways Hand catcher at the 158 mark. 23 seconds in, he takes a dig to the house, and the next play, they throw him a quick screen. He makes Buddy look like an absolute fool, and a house calls fool. it. A fool. A fool, and he house calls it. I'm like, do you see that Hypo's offense? A dig? <laughs> we run digs all the time. You get you get him the dig in the middle of Neyland Stadium, and then he, he, can, he has enough juice to leave yeah. the South Carolina safety – or then how many times did, did we see Joe Milton this year take it and and throw it out? And the fact that you got a brew that can – a brew would catch it and probably make a guy miss and then probably truck stick someone and then beside squirrel catch it making the first guy miss and getting in the field. But other than those two guys, I don't know who else on the field or on the UT team now is going to do it as good as Braylon does it. And hey, we used We used way more running backs this year trying to do that like having them line up outside or having them escape from the backfield. Then the year prior, we did so many wide receiver ones. Like we like integrated our running backs into it because we didn't have as many receivers to do it. And Braylon's on here, like you said, takes that dig to the house, outruns multiple guys with angles on him, and then makes a dude touch gir- touch earth. Literally makes him like, oh, all fours on the ground. He jukes him so bad and just goes. I, that stuff is almost like so – like you can't actually teach how athletic that is. Like he's just – like he really has grown into like that freak mold. Yes, yes. So the um, – uh, let me make sure – the dig to the house. Oh, yeah. So I, I had to start here. Two things that we see all the time in a high pull offense. Not only is he a, a high – like not only is he, a, like you said, 50-50 ball and, and, and he can also take the top off, but he's a contested catcher. And I say contested catcher meaning whether he's going up and high pointing it, whether he's got a guy draped on him and he's catching it. Um, so not just high point balls, but contested catches because he's being covered and he still plucks it out of the air. I, I love that. And then last thing. We just talked about Mike Matthews. Mike Matthews is a really, really, really good football player. He's a five-star. Maybe they made Mike a five-star because he does it offensively and defensively, and Braylon just played offense, to my knowledge. I didn't really see any defense. But as a wide receiver-wise, I'm really excited about both of them, but I'm probably even more excited than Braylon. And that's that's just one man one man's opinion. I'm not saying that I think he's going to be better. I'm saying what I've watched as of today, I thought that he – I thought he was awesome, and so I did do this. This is the only uh, this is the only group that I did this for. I said I got to go see where Braylon stacks up nationally and why he's not a five star. So I go and I look at the recruiting rankings for wide receivers. Now I think Mike Matthews is maybe like seventh or not. I think he's seventh, and Braylon's not far behind. He's a top twenty receiver in the nation. He's seventeenth, and this what I forget which one I looked at. And there's only nine five stars. There's only nine five stars and the rest are four stars. So he's a very, very high four star in the rankings. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, it's not like he's the 40th receiver. Like he's got respect on his name. He's he's a top 20, 
you know, almost top 15 receiver at this publication that I was looking at. Mm-hmm. And and so that made me happy. I was like, because he is nasty. And I, the only reason I can think that he's not a five-star is maybe because he didn't play defense, maybe testing. I, I don't know. But I don't what know. I saw film wise, I love the guy. Yeah, I do too. Listen, you're not the only man opinion that Braylon looked a little bit better than Mike. So maybe it's just the podcast's opinion. Um, but I'm glad we have both. So right. right. And that's what matters. Is not uh the funny thing is is they're very I think they're both kind of in that like six one, one eighty, six two, one eighty, one ninety ish. So they're both very much a variety for him and they both kind of do play very similar. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm very, very excited. And I hate it. I hate it that my practice going to practice days are over um, because I would have loved to see these boys. I get excited yeah. to see all the one, all the guys that we watched their recruiting stuff over the years, and then we get to go see them in spring practice. I always thoroughly enjoy that. Um, but he would have been – I would have loved to go and see Braylon and Mike in one-on-ones. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been really fun to watch. I uh, would have loved a little 50-50 ball from Braylon. Um, and I, I put in my notes, like you said, a similar, similar offense, similar plays. You see that he runs, um, for our offense. Okay. Let's get to these. Let's get to these O linemen. Huh? How about that? How about, how about that? We got four of these bad boys on campus already. Um, I love that. I love the fact that they're already here. I love the fact that they already can get some practice in. Let's get these reps. These boys are raw, raw. Um, so they need those technique reps. I've said this before. I will say it again, and I will continue to say it. There's not a lot of technique taught at the high school level when it comes to offensive linemen. A lot of the time, what you're looking for in a recruit is a nasty dude who is athletic and real strong, and that's what we want. Nasty dude who's athletic. Um, all of these guys got a little nasty to them, which I like. I like it a lot. Uh, let's start with Jesse. Jesse, big boy, big boy, about six, six, maybe pushing six, seven. I saw some spots that said six, seven, uh, only about 280. So he can put on weight onto that frame. Um, he is one that, uh, that that he kind of teabags some guys. He plays a little nasty. He really tries to look for someone to pancake, someone to dump, which I really like. He has a strong upper body, likes to throw dudes away. Um, one thing about his play is we got to get him off his toes. He likes to get up on his toes. And I get it. If you're pushing something, you get up on your toes to try and get all your weight forward and push into it. But a O-line coaching point is if you're pushing a truck in the ice and snow and you go up on your toes, guess what's happening next? Your teeth is going in the tailgate because you're going to slip. And that's what happens a lot to guys who lean too much on their toes. So, One thing for Jesse we need to work on, just a little bit of base. Just give me a little bit of base, Jesse. I want you to start moving dudes not through your toes, but through your squat form. You are stronger in your squat. You are a stronger human being with both feet flat on the earth than you are up on your toes. It is science, okay? So let's start using some flat feet. Start using the inside insoles of our feet with a nice, good, wide base. Um, and we'll be good. Didn't get to see a lot of pass pro out of Jesse, which I wish I could have. But a tall dude who can put on weight, who also has some pulling highlights where he's out in space searching for guys to hit. And he plays nasty. Thumbs up for me. Very excited. Want to see where he can go. So I'll be honest, I did not get to watch Jesse and I apologize. Um, there might have been a slight reason because the last time I watched it, uh, it was, hey, big, nasty athlete, but they run triple option, so there's not a ton to see. And, yeah. and 
and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I knew you were going to be watching, but correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it was going to be the exact same thing I saw last year of him just being bigger and more physical and decleaning people. I, I'm not going to be able to catch as much from that yeah. type of offense for a lineman as you are. But correct me if I'm wrong. He might be like a slight project compared to. He might be a little bit um, because he does run that run that wing T offense. Like I said, there's no pass pro reps, so that's something we need to actually get a hold of. Um, but like Ollie Lane is a great example. He ran a wing T offense in high school. He actually came and trained with me before, right before he committed to UT and before he went there. Um, and Buddy didn't know what a three-point stance was. Like, he was in a four-point stance all through high school until, like, he came and I was like, all right, we got to get we got to get you leaning back a little bit. I know this is a little uncomfortable for you, but we can't have you looking like the tush push out there. Like, we got <laughs> we got to lean you back some. So, th- listen, he he's athletic enough. Um, I think the coaches just love his nastiness, and they see him pulling – they see him getting in, in in counter and the amount of counter that we run with pulling tackles. All of these guys, honestly, have tape where they're pulling around and finding work. Um, I honestly think that uh, Max Anderson might be the best at that. Yeah. But all of them, all of them had good tape on that, which is like, oh, I'm st- I'm seeing a theme out of Glenn Ellerby. I'm seeing a theme out of offensive line. We want we want guys not tripping over their feet when they're pulling. So now next up Gage Ginther. I truly, truly, truly hope you watched this film. I, I did. Okay. I did. There's, there's, there's no way I could not watch Gage because we loved his film, like his junior year film. We both fell in love with it. We fell in love with him and we thought that it was one of the best Offensive line highlight films we'd ever seen. It was almost near perfect. Yep. I'm going to say this. I wasn't as impressed on this one that I was with that one. But it's hard. If I watch something and it's a 100 out of 100, it's hard to be impressed. Like, I need to see another 100 out of 100. And I didn't think – there were just some things that I – I'll mention after after I want to hear what you thought. Did you think it was as good as last year's? I, uh, overall, I would probably say no, but there were a few plays in there where I got like a little shiver down my spine. I was like, yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. I freaking love it. Like there was just, man, there's a couple things in his film where I'm like, that's exactly what I want you to do as not like you did it perfectly. So his film definitely excited me. Don't. He, no red arrow. Like no, no, no still, no. still maybe in the green. Let me, let me just. Show, so these are what I saw. I thought he was a little more nasty this year than he was last year, which is understandable because once again you go from that junior to senior year. Yeah. And you truly, you're getting recruited. And I'm not talking about Gage. I'm talking about in general. You're going from junior to senior. You, you're getting recruited. You officially become the big man on campus, but I, because I don't care how good you are, there's still seniors above you. Mm-hmm. There's all that type vibe, but you go and you've been hearing how awesome you are for a year. You've been hearing all this. You've gotten bigger and stronger, and you are ready to go and murder people. And, and people sometimes know, people know who you are too, and they're yeah. they they might get a little fearful before that game starts. I, I I just I thought he was I thought he was a little more nasty this year. I loved his finish. Uh his feet still look really good to me. I loved how he was finding work, and I know you love how people find work. The only thing is I thought he was a little more handsy this year, and I thought that he was absolutely, which is a product of being the big man on campus, everyone knowing who Gage Ginther is. You go to a game and everyone's, you know, there's like, oh, that's the guy he's committed to Tennessee or, and I'm just, you know, that's the guy that's committed to Bama or that's the guy that's committed to wherever. I'm not just, but you kind of get known. And then it's like, so he really, really wants to finish a pancake dudes. And I thought there's a couple of times he got a little handsy and it's like, Hey, you've done your job. Like go ahead and embarrass this guy if you want, but probably at the next level, like you, you might get called on that. So it's one of those building habits things. But anyways, now go take it, whatever, yeah. whatever. 
Uh, no, to your point with the handsy thing, I put down, we got to work on the torque. Can't be torquing. There's, there's times where you're towards the end of the block and what he would do is like a little push, push pull with his hands, right? Push that left out, pull that right in and torque the guy to try and dump him. That's going to be a holding call on you nine times out of 10. So got to be careful with that. But when it comes to gauge, about 30 seconds in, we see a pass pro rep. Oh, my gosh. It is beautiful. The man is at left tackle. His hips stay square to the line. The first kick just lifts that foot up in the air. He puts it right back down. What I was saying earlier on those insteps, he, he puts it right back down. He actually takes his right foot, steps forward to cut off anything inside, and then goes back out to this guy. Just great pass pro. Drew great footwork in his pass set. Like, I absolutely love that. Keeps the base the entire time. Doesn't get leaned one way or the other. Um, like you said, nasty, nasty teabagging folks out there. Like, legit making it a point to do that. Uh, he I, didn't is, see that, I didn't see that as much as last year either. So no. I feel like I feel like I've saw him a lot more of that. If I remember correctly, because he was a tactician, his feet were great. I thought his hand placement was great. Mm -hmm. Everything was awesome with his pass pro last year. But now it's like now he's added that nastiness to yeah. it. There's a there's there's a few plays where I'm just like looking at the guy he just blocked, and I can tell like dudes just want to quit. Like they're just they're just tired of it. They're tired of dealing with him. Which is great as an officer. Like that's what you want out of the defense. They're tired of dealing with you. Um, I thought, man, on some of his some of his down blocks and his ability to work with guys in double teams, like very impressive. Um, one play I absolutely loved because it is exactly what I did and exactly what I would do in certain situations. I see him, it, the play starts, and he's lined up at left tackle. And I see him, like, kind of get into a stance. And then all of a sudden, he, like, turns out towards the defensive end. Like, literally almost turns his shoulders out towards him and is just staring at the guy. And my first reaction is, hey, man, like, you're not supposed to stare at who you're going to. Like, don't let them know what's going on. Make sure, I mean, now the defensive end knows, hey, he's past setting on me. DB might look over at you and go, oh, crap, here we go. It's going to be a pass. Now I can, you know, get back in my drop. It's literally a down block on the three technique. <laughs> and he does it perfect. He does perfect footwork into his little high knee skip, which is exactly what we're supposed to do, staying square, not getting overturned. It was – it shocked me that he did that that he literally stared at that defensive end just to make that three technique think, I'm not coming to you. I'm not blocking you. Don't worry about it. You're all good. And then just coming down and, man, just hitting them. It's like that little stuff out of an 18-year-old to be like, I'm going to trick these guys. I am bigger and stronger than all of them, and I'm nastier than them, but I'm also going to be smarter than them. I'm going to, I'm going to play mind games with these fools. So they don't know what's coming. Absolutely love it out of Gage. Gage, I'm 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 more excited about Gage after watching this film. Even though we were so excited about his junior tape, I was I was ready to see what he grew into. And when I look back over the past few classes, like Gage makes me feel the best out of some of these offensive linemen, even more than I would say an Addison Nichols made me feel. And I I was very high on Addison. I yeah. loved Addison. Yeah, we like we like Addison a lot, but I I I love, man, I love Max and I love Gage. I, I I'm 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 excited about this offensive line class. I see why they wanted why they wanted uh, William. I, I know why they wanted Jesse. But so I, I'm I'm with you. I, I'm I'm the, the, just comparing you know this comparing this class to the the Mo Clipper. The um, the big tall guy from Florida, Brian Grant or whatever his name yeah. was. Um, some of the other guys that we've watched, it's like not that I didn't like some of their stuff, but I I I can just I can see these dudes in orange making the plays. Yeah. Meaning, like come in, 
work hard, and we're going to be seeing their ass in a year or two. And I'm not going to be surprised about it at all when they're doing really, really well. I would agree. I, 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 I thought – when I can see technique out of you in high school, oh, I'm very excited. That was that was what told me that Cade Mays was going to be a good player. Whenever I actually first got to see him in high school and he was a sophomore and I saw his pass set, and I was like, damn, buddy's already got the technique down as a 15-year-old. He's going to be a problem. Yeah. So, uh, okay, on to uh, William Satterwhite. With William – he is honestly like the most patient blocker I've seen. He does not get overextended. Switch it, switch it, switch it. <laughs> oh, good. Good catch. Uh, he does not get overextended at all. That man has never been overextended. He has his feet underneath him always. In some instances, it is bad for him. Where, how can I explain this? Good. So you want to have a wide base. You don't want your weight to be too forward uh, when you're le- when you're starting a block on somebody. But you need to have kind of a low center of gravity with a little bit of lean on your guy when you first make contact. There are times in Williams' tape, because he's concentrating so much on his wide base, that he brings his hips into it too early. You bring your hips into it at the end when you want to lift and dump, not at the beginning. He will do it at the beginning sometimes, and what that does is just creates a little stalemate, and then you just sit there because you're both standing straight up. All four of these guys can be lower. Let's, let's, Let's call spade a spade. All of them stand up in their film but they're all bigger and stronger than everybody so they can get away with it. Have you have you ever watched a high school highlight film of an offensive lineman that they didn't need no, to skip? No, that's yeah. never happened. Never, 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 never. So, um, but the base and the patience in the way he blocks is so good. There are plays where he's working up to the next level. You just see him like stay in that base, stay in that base, stay in that base, pick up the, pick up the safety coming over. You see him pulling around, and he pulls in a run and then all of a sudden gets to a base. Once he sees somebody coming up, he's not going to get juked out by a defender. He's blocking for the running back. Like, And once he gets hands on dudes, he's clamped, clamped on guys, gets them in tight, and he just holds them real close to them. There wasn't as many pancakes or as many dumps as some of the other film. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. And I'm okay. Because he did his job. Yeah. His guy did not make the tackle. And you know what? If you're not dumping a bunch of guys, it's not as important to dump guys. I think there was ones he left out on the field that he could have dumped dudes. Um, but good athlete, good base, which is a hard thing to teach to some of these guys. Jesse's going to have to learn about that base. Hopefully William can give him a little pointers when they get there. Um but just can just a nice, solid, consistent kind of film from from William. I, I agree completely. I think you took it away. I, I think he's very, very rock solid. I, I think he's got good base, pretty darn good technique, technician, mm-hmm. fundamental. He maybe didn't dump as many people, which is fine with me. It's we've talked about it a million times. A lot of these big time high school, guys and I get it they just want to dump and dump and dump mm-hmm. and that almost becomes more important than just doing your job yeah and, and I get it I would have been the exact same way you were the exact same way we wanted to body people and embarrass them and there's going to be a time and place for that <laughs> at the next level the 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 pancake is, is a dunk it's cool it's cool to go throw a dunk but you know what it's just two points like it's the same thing as a layup and I don't want to go out of my way to try to throw one down home on a fast break and bang it off the back iron. When yeah, I did. exactly. You know what I mean? So, so it doesn't bother me. Like I still saw with him, there was still some of the, in, in, instead of maybe with some of the owns being nasty, there was still some of the fired up. Like he was yeah. still fired up. Like he, in a way kind of reminded me of you a little bit where you had that nasty about you, but you were just, 
you were just fired up. Like if you made your block and you looked up and one of our running backs in high school or even at UT was taking it, you were like, let's go. Like you were like, yes, like you were fired up instead of standing someone over someone and letting them know what's up, which you you've done. You were just like, Hey, like we scored. It was more. And there was a couple of times I saw that with him. And I was like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's still a team game. And so, so I like that. Another thing that you did not mention that I, that I think is super solid about William is that he plays, he played tackle and guard. And I think, and I, and I, and I think that's nice to have, not to say, that in his first year or two, we're going to be seeing that. But we both know that if he's around as a redshirt junior or a real junior, real senior, it is very nice to have someone that is comfortable doing both. Yeah, let me look and see what his measurables are. Because, I mean, he, just look. Well, he's a guard body type. We've already, I remember when we talked about it. He's a guard body type. And he'll yeah. Play. I mean, that's all that I would like. I was watching him play tackle, but the whole time, just like, yeah, look at this guard. Yeah. 6'3, 300. Right. That's a guard. It's it's guard written all over. But if he's athletic enough in high school to go play a tackle, then that that bodes well uh, for for the next level. But yeah, super solid, super consistent. I like his film. I I, I liked it the first time we watched it. I like it this time that we watch it. Mm -hmm. It's. yeah, I just I think it's I think it's super solid. That's what yeah, I guess. solid is the best word for it. I would watch I watch this. I'm like, oh, good. I'm I'm happy. Like I'm happy that he's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Exactly. Um, okay, Max Anderson, last O lineman. I said it earlier. I, Max pulling and getting through traffic. He was the best of all of these guys. It it there's not a lot of pass pro in his film. It's a lot of run blocking, but. His ability to pull around and just like keep a good base, but like eyes up on people, like searching is so good. Like there were times where he's picking up safeties that are coming down into the box. He's picking up linebackers that are scraping across. The guy, the, the and that he's is not only good eyes, it's athleticism. Like you can't just pick a guy up, like you will fall. You will fall over with these fast dudes trying to run downhill and get to the running back. Um, he's, and, what I was going to say is I don't want to hijack yours because I'll have my time to talk about him. He looks so natural and so effortless on his pulls. Yeah. Kyler, there's times where I'm watching his highlight film and it's Texas football, so he's big. The guys they're playing against are big. They're on the damn – there's a couple of them where he's in, in Jerry World. Like He already looks like a college offensive lineman, and yeah. that is, that's crazy to say about a high schooler. Yeah, he does. Um, wor- it, it, nasty, another just nasty dude. Oh. Uh, it, it, you know he had he had a few tea bags on his on his tape too, um, and working real well in double teams. Yes, real well. I mean, there's to the measurement of what you want is I don't want to see that other team's jersey color between you, right? If you're working together, I can't see white through the two of you. And that's what he does. He, I mean, he is tight to his other offensive linemen when they work on those doubles. So another guy kind of like Jesse that it's like so much run experience, so much run technique that he's worked on, but not that much pass pro. Um, We can learn pass pro. Okay. I learned pass pro. It, it you know when I when I was doing it in high school I was getting by I was doing a good job I wasn't square in my set I didn't have good feet I was kind of rolling over you know I wasn't picking them up as much as I should have I didn't have good hand placement on my punches you grow into that um, so it doesn't necessarily worry me I know people are like oh they've never passed block before like what's going to happen it's okay they're not playing right away they're not going to play in the bowl okay we got time. I, I think but but I already said where he looks so natural and he already looks like he's a college offensive lineman. His body type looks like he could have been a tackle, but I think he is a really, really natural guard. Like he kind of has that tall, yeah, leaner look mm-hmm. to him, but he plays like a guard. Now that's a really awesome thing because they can either put him in and he can come in and be an absolute dog at a guard. But the other thing for Heupel's offense, 
we pull the tackles a decent amount. So it's if he goes and naturally once he starts working those pass sets from a tackle position left or right, I think that could be really scary. Or it's um it's very I'll much. A, hey, I'll take a six five three fifteen guard. Oh, dude, any all day. day, any day that's athletic and nasty. It's just funny because his body type, like I said, looks a little bit like a tackle. He plays a little bit more like a guard, and so there's there's the mix of where I think he could do either. Yeah, um, I, I love Mac. So so Braylon is is if I have a top three of of so far of highlight films, it's it's Braylon, you know, Gages from last year, and then Max. And funny thing is, I love Max's last year. I like it this year. I think that, you know, the nasty's still there, the pulling's still there. I do think his hands were inside a little bit better this year than they were last year because a lot of times last year we would see the, the That's outside right. on the shoulders. There was yeah. more times this time where I saw him driving and dumping, buddy, but I didn't see the hands like I saw last year, which is nice to see. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then you already mentioned he worked up really well. I love Max. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very, very excited to see – how his college career grows because I think it could be pretty damn awesome. I do too. So, I do too. Uh, and last but not least, Idris Farouk. Um, oh, I just realized that uh, Kellen Lindstrom was one of the guys that I I broke down, but I don't see him on here. Yeah, uh, I think I think it was because I had ten. One, that's two, fine. Three, I mean, my my notes aren't going to go away. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. We'll just talk about it on the next one. Yeah. Um, but Idris Farouk. I, I mean, first thing about Idris, in zone, that buddy's got feel to him, right? His ability to feel where those wide receivers are and keep his eyes on the quarterback, he's a guy that you would describe as like a ball hawk because he's looking to kind of sit back, wait, make the quarterback think, oh, this hitch is open. Oh, this post is open. And then he goes and gets it oh, this corner out is going to be open. Oh, he drops back in his zone more so he can go cover it. Um, so I was very impressed with his zone coverage skills. I liked – he had one man rep where he followed a guy up on a wheel route, which I thought was really good. Uh, but I didn't see a ton of man. And he's an okay tackler to me. I don't know what you think. Are we talking about the same guy? Let's <laughs> see. This is all – this was. I thought there were plays where Idris is not afraid to make the tackle and he comes up, flies, right? And he comes He's up and violent. hits. He's violent. And he comes to violence, and that's fantastic. But I saw a lot where his head was on the wrong side, where he is missing that tackle versus a SEC elite athlete. That is the kind of thing where I'm like, man, yeah, I like that hit you made on him, but I noticed you hit him with your left shoulder while he was running down the right sideline, it's like, that makes me nervous a little bit. Okay. Because okay. I didn't see that. I did not see that out of Marcus Gore. I saw Marcus fighting his head across every single time. That's what made me feel really good about Marcus's tackling. So we see – so we're probably – you probably like Marcus a little bit more. I probably like Farouk a little bit more. Well, I, I like Marcus for a nickel. I like Farouk for a safety. A lot more. Okay. Well, I was so impressed. The first clip I watch is him against IMG. We obviously know that they have really, really good He balled out. He played his best game versus IMG. Which you love to see a guy playing his best game against one of the best competitions in the country. He's the backside safety. So so what that means is he's the safety opposite where they have trips. Mm -hmm. There's a guy that takes off. And this – I don't know who he is, but he is moving. He's hauling ass. Not only does Reese recognize it early, he gets over there in plenty enough time and picks it off. And I was so impressed with just the recognition, the athletic yeah. ability to get there, no wasted steps, go make the play. Because he was he was uh, one high safety, I think. I, I think the other safety, which would make sense if they were cover three, then that other safety that was uh, up top on the other side would come down because there's trips. Yeah. So maybe that's what it was is because then that would make sense that he knew he had to get deep third, which then deep third ended up over, over into the deep third of the corner, but the corner wasn't there. So no, it was yeah. awesome. Awesome recognition. Awesome play. I think he hits really, really hard. I think he's very violent. And there's one thing 
I don't want people to forget in football. Um, you need playmakers. You need you need Braylon Staley's. You need Mike Matthews. You need some of these dudes. But there's always a place for being violent and blocking and tackling. And I so I mean I thought he hits really really hard. Yeah. He had a couple really nice plays where he forced fumbles where you can see he comes in blasts someone, then his sideline starts going nuts and they get the ball. Like that's something that I'm gonna notice. And it doesn't look like anything special because the film's way back here and it's like a tackle 10 yards downfield, but you can just tell when he brings it, he brings it. He had a pick six house calls. It's like, okay, dude's an athlete. Like he's athletic enough. He just, not only did he pick it off, but he house calls it. There's also a really good read by him to go pick it off. Oh, he was great. The, I thought he had a real, a couple real nice PBUs, which you were talking about where he was in zone steps, eyes, reading it, shooting his gun, PBU. Um, like I said, downhill, multiple force fumbles. Um, I, I love the open field tackle he had when he was in the slot. So another thing where I was talking about where I see this happen a lot with, with Tennessee and college football in general. So we got our slot guy and the slot guy releases and goes inside. He tried – it looked almost awkward. Like someone watching him, like, wow, he just got beat. It's like, no. He was trying to get hands on the guy, and the guy just took a drastically inside shade. So – he tried to do his job and he, he got a hand on him, but then he started working. They throw a quick one out. He runs out there. That guy puts a move on him and he looks like he's about to go down and he regathers his feet, yeah. gets up, makes a tackle. And it's like, that is, those are the athletes that we need at Tennessee. When we talk about it at the end of the year and what I want next year, mm-hmm. a little preview is I want some more team speed on defense, whether it's linebackers and safeties and corners. And we got to continue to try to get better at those at those tackles. Yeah. in those plays. And so yeah. that right there, I was like, okay, that's another one where I envision. Yeah. Let's make the first tackle. Let's do that. Let's not, let's not, not depend it, it, on it, it, other guys coming in. Well, that's the other thing, Kyler, even if he had not made that tackle, he held that guy up until there was about four other dudes with him. Yeah. So I, you know, where the, where Tennessee's at so far, this half of the, of the guys that we've talked about, and you know, we have another, ha- you know, we have a whole other half of recruits, and we got um, some film to break down of transfers. But like the fact that we're we've got two dog ass receivers, they're bringing in secondary with the secondary guys they already brought because they knew that they were old and that you know they were had some veteran guys there, and they knew they need to get a little bit younger, maybe a little bit more speed, more athletic, uh, and then the offensive linemen. It's like this group. There's there's five or six dudes on this on this list alone that I'm like I'm super pumped about. Yeah, definitely. I, I love I love a class with multiple offensive linemen. I love a class with athletes um, and DBs. I like I like that a lot. Yeah, and the only thing I'm gonna want to see is some D tackles. Um, you know, and, and 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 we've hit edge hard. We've hit edge hard. I mean, we got James Pierce, Joshua Joseph, yeah. Elijah Herring, uh, Shadavian Bradley, and we do have Jordan Ross. So I'll be excited to watch his. So I, I think the only thing that I'm thinking about is I want to see some D-line but uh, or interior D-line. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of interior D-line aren't going to help you straight out of high school. So um, Maybe that's to, a transfer portal thing. Right. Not to say that we don't need to recruit them. We do need to recruit them. But I'm saying that's one of those things that even if they were on here, I'm not going to be like, wow, they could help us next year, which there's a couple dudes on this list that I think could potentially help us next year. I like that. I like that positivity. <laughs> All right, brother. See ya. See ya. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you are watching, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. Uh, if you're just listening, rate, review, download, and re-download. Uh, also follow us on all those uh, listening platforms you, you may use. Uh, follow us on social media at Pancakes and Bacon on our Twitter at Pancakes and Bacon underscore RTI on Instagram. Uh, to follow Reed, it is just at rbacon26 on Twitter. And for myself, it is just at Kyler Kerbison on all social medias. So check me out there. Uh, but, yeah, super excited for this class coming in. Super excited for the bowl game. Um, thank you guys so much for being the best fans in the world. And uh, as always, go balls. Go balls.